Hi, I'm Julia, a mechanical engineering student who recently took thermodynamics, and I'd like to explain a concept that I wish I had learned in the beginning of taking the course, namely the intuition for reading PV and TS diagrams. PV and TS diagrams are basic but sometimes non-intuitive graphs that represent thermodynamic systems. First of all, many systems are idealized and these are the most common processes that are represented on these types of graphs. On a PV diagram, you're going to have the isothermal line or a constant temperature line shown as an inverse relationship between P and V, pressure and volume. Over here you have the isobaric line, which is constant pressure, or a constant horizontal line on the PV diagram. Below, you'll have the isochoric, or, is, uh, or constant volume line, which is vertical. And you have the adiabatic, or constant entropy, isentropic, constant S. All different ways to say uh, no heat exchange. Uh, also shown as an inverse relationship between P and V, but steeper than the isothermal line. Yes, that's the adiabatic one. Okay. In the beginning, when I first encountered these graphs, I was told to simply draw a PV diagram. At that point, I had no idea what it meant, but I started realizing there are certain common features of the PV diagram. Uh, other than the axes, of course, there's this, the vapor dome, and uh, lines drawn like that, which represent isotherms. First of all, this vapor dome is the 2D representation, the 2D projection onto the PV diagram of the 3D PVT surface, pressure, volume, temperature, that a phase diagram that will show you the phase at any point on that graph. For example, on this one, uh, if you see where the isotherm intersects it, if you're at this point on the isotherm, along this left half of the vapor dome, anywhere on that point, you're a saturated liquid, uh, which can be denoted as SF. And once you get to the right, you're a saturated vapor, or SG. This isotherm, at any point along this line, curved here, horizontal across the two-phase region, and then curved again down there, uh, is at one temperature. Once you get to the middle two-phase region, it's exactly that, two phases. So you have a mixture of gas and liquid. Uh, that's described with X, uh, the quality at that point. So the quality is basically the ratio of vapor to the total mass. So you're going to have mass of vapor over mass of liquid plus mass of vapor. On this isotherm, you'll start here, get to the saturated liquid at this point, increase in quality across the two-phase region, and then over here you'll be saturated vapor and then vapor continuing onwards. So those are the basic points um, on a PV graph that you will see. The most common system would be the Carnot cycle. Uh, seeing this on a PV diagram, you're going to see some curved lines, but now you'll know these two curves are isothermal lines and the steeper inverse relationship would be the isentropic lines. From 1 to 2, uh, it's an isothermal expansion. You can tell that because you're on an isothermal line here and increasing in volume, so going right on the diagram. The second process would be an isentropic process that's a steeper curved line that's also increasing in volume, therefore adiabatic expansion. 3 to 4, going backwards on a graph means you're compressing, and being on a constant temperature line means it's isothermal, so you have an isothermal compression. Going back up, you're going to have the steeper adiabatic isentropic line and a compression because you're still going left on the PV diagram. In total, you can see how these lines drawn represent this system and the cycle being an idealized thermodynamic cycle being easily drawn on a PV diagram. You can see uh, and reference other Khan Academy videos such as what are PV diagrams to see a mathematical explanation of why the area under these processes, for example, uh, 1, 4, B, A, 1, this little section, you can see why uh, the volume under the curve uh, represents work. Um, in this case, uh, the part I just showed there, because it's negative work, would be compressive work. So on this in this cycle, these two compressive processes uh, produce compressive work, and the expansion processes create expansion work. Cool. 
onto the TS diagram. Entropy is usually uh, a concept shown later in a thermodynamics course, but still a very important one. At that point, you start drawing TS diagrams, or temperature versus entropy. You can see how it simplifies certain processes that are focused on entropy and studying that, such as the Carnot cycle with a square, or a rectangle, um, which is still shows two isothermal lines and then two uh, isentropic lines. On a TS diagram, you're going to have the S, the constant S isentropic line, as a vertical line, the isen isothermal or constant temperature lines as a horizontal line, and then the constant volume line being slightly steeper than constant pressure. Those common processes are shown in another example, which is the air standard diesel cycle for CI compressed ignition engines. Basically, right now, you just need to be uh, pay attention to the fact that it's air. So since it's in the gas phase, uh, both of these are shown on the right side of the vapor dome and does not need to be included. It's assumed you're on the right. On that side, you can see the isentropic lines, the constant pressure, and the constant volume, and how that translates over to a TS diagram, which also shows the constant uh, entropy lines, but also that the constant volume line is steeper than the constant pressure line. Uh, uh, you can figure out work and a lot of different uh, variables and uh, properties of these of this cycle and the processes with mathematical expressions, um, but the basics are right here. And that's how I would read PV and TS diagrams and explain them without all of the equations or trying not to use all of the numbers. Okay, I hope that helped.